We are going to continue our second lesson on lay up your treasures in the kingdom of heaven and try to, again, to give you a complete look at what Jesus is saying and try to get the flesh out of your thoughts and out of your mind because the devil will use every little bit to try to make you misunderstand the scripture because he uses mammoth to keep men and women in his kingdom. Jesus makes a statement as he says, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. Last week we talked about treasures. Treasures that are not income. They're not the source that you live on. Treasures are things that people get and really don't need them. If you decide that you want a, a $10,000 diamond and you bought a $10,000 diamond, you can't wear it because somebody cut your finger off, but you leave it in the house or rent a safe deposit box because this treasure is so important to you, a thing that you put it there and then you would see your neighbor starve or you would see your church roof fall or things of God would not even come into play or you wouldn't put your child through college because you are not going to keep take this ring and cash it in because one day it's going to be valuable. That's a treasure. We used to break in to get that ring. You understand that? And so when he's talking, he's not talking about regular living expenses and things you're going to need when you retire or whatnot. You can invest because you realize that one day you're going to be old and you realize one day that you're going to need some money coming in that you're not going to have to work for or can't work for. Because when you're 70 or 75 years of age, you can't go out and work a job. Nobody's going to hire you. And then 70 to 75% of what money you do have will be used for medical expenses. The system is tilt that way. It's tilt that way in such a manner that young folk don't understand it until they reach retirement age and then they begin to find out that one prescription can cost you six, seven hundred or thousand dollars. Life prescription to keep you alive. And it, don't be a diabetic. You, you a prescription for insulin will always cost you two, three hundred dollars a month unless you have the insurance to pick up the copay, unless you have social services to pick it up, it depends on who's in government, whether you're going to get social services or not. And if you don't get your insulin, you're surely going to die. Now, are you going to buy your insulin or buy your food? If you don't get your insulin, you're going to lose your eyesight. You're going to lose your limbs. It's going to attack your kidneys. You're going to be on a dialysis machine. Or it's going to attack your heart. It's going to attack every vessel in your body. That demon will attack. And if you are not prepared at your old age for that, you will leave here long before God desires for you to leave here. And that doesn't mean you have to just focus in on just saving money, 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 money. You get to focus in on money, money, money. Now the money has become your treasure. But God wants you to understand that there's a balance here because you're not here permanently. 
You came with nothing. You will leave with what? Nothing. So we ought to be able to pay attention to what God has put on the natural earth to whereas we should be satisfied with what he tells us to do and he told us to act like an ant, to store up something for hard times or for bad times. But he didn't say store up something for your great or great great grandchildren. But he also says a man who doesn't leave an inheritance to his children, there's something wrong with him too. And you can always leave property or something to your children or even money. But again, you don't get focused in on this is my number one thing and I will hurt whoever I need to hurt, step on whoever I need to step on to achieve it. And so he's making sure of that. Because when you get to the point to whereas money becomes your number one focus, which it becomes to most none born again people, we move to Proverbs 23, 4. I want you to go over there with me. And this is the reason why some people are broke today. It's all in the scripture, been there all along. In fact, Proverbs 23, 4 and 5. I'm going to wait till you get over there. When everybody get over there, please say amen. All right. Now notice here, you do not worry yourself. Do not who? Who? Yourself. To gain wealth. Cease from your consideration of it. Do you want to be wealthy? How many folks? Yeah. Why? They run and pay. And we get the uh, $457 million uh, Scratch offs, not scratch off, Powerball, lottery. And nothing, there's nothing in the Bible says you can't do that. If you get it, you get it. But don't go down there and cause four hundred fifty, I'm gonna buy two hundred dollars off of scratch off tickets and I'm gonna hit it. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't even don't even bother with that. Because God has put a you will never get it in here. Look at the next verse. When you set your eyes on it, it's gone. Did your Bible say that? When you fall down to the ways of the devil, God's going to take it right away from you. Why are some people fo uh, broke today? It's because they desire wealth. When I get some more money, when I get this, when I get that. And the whole purpose is waiting and struggling and waiting to welfare day. And time they get on welfare day before day is out, it's gone. Or wait until you get your Social Security check or your retirement check before day is out, it's gone. Why? It's because my heart is on the wealth. Am I speaking anything that's not written? It says when, you, you know, when your eyes are on it, it's gone. For wealth certainly make itself what? Wings. Like an eagle that flies towards the heavens. So God does not want us to gain that sin. Are you seeing it? The, the, the connotation there, you begin to understand. God doesn't want us to gain the sin of wanting wealth things that was created instead of wanting the creator. The creator makes all wealth. And he's already set the basis and given it to you because he told you how to get it right back over here in Matthew. And it told us how to get it, but we grow up and we're educated for money. We're educated from the time that we go to school, get a good education so you can make money and get rich. And we say those things around our children, our grandchildren. And they get focused and their heart is on having things 
get me a place, get me an apartment, buy me a house, get me a nice car, get me some clothes. And every month they're buying new clothes, trying to keep up with fashions. And every year they're changing their clothes. They, they buy $1,000 for clothes for this fashion next year. Some homosexual change the design. And they got to throw the $1,000 away and then I change, go to another one. Most women clothes are designed by men. And if I was a woman, I wouldn't have no man design something for me. But thank God I'm not a woman. Did you know that most women clothes are designed by men? They got the name brands on them. And how can I design a dress for a woman? I'm not a woman. I'm moving on. Let's stick to the Bible here. Now notice, go back over here to Matthews. He says, but store up for yourselves treasures. Now notice he says what? Treasures, not one treasure, but what? Treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in are still. All right? Are we moving that? Well, what? Thieves do not break in and steal. Now, there's one more verse I want to move you over to, and we'll come back, and we're going to stay here. Let's go to Ma Matthews 19, 21. In fact, we'll pick, we'll pick up 1920. You've heard this a hundred million times. Probably and read it over and over again. The young man said to him, here's a young man. He comes to Jesus and he says to him, all these things I've done. You know, he's talking about the law. He's, he's, he has really kept the law to T. His focus was on the law. And he comes up to Jesus and coming up to God himself and says, all these things I, have, things I have kept, what am I lacking? He knew he was short something. And Jesus says to him, if you wish to be complete, say that with me. If you wish to be complete. Come on, congregation. If you wish to be complete. He says, go and sell your possessions and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and then you can come and follow me. You all read the same Bible. Now, as long as you, your treasure is over there, you can't follow me. Now watch what he says. But when the young man heard the statement from God, he went away grieving, for he was one who owned what? Much property. Now, God can give you much property, and it won't cost you. But when you try to give yourself much property, that will keep you from doing God's work, and you're working against God. You won't let your father help you. It, does it make sense to you now? Now watch what he says. And Jesus says to his disciples, he turned around and says to his students, truly I say to you, it is hard, now watch what he says, it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. He didn't say it's impossible, he said it's what? Hard. Why? is because the man's heart won't let him give up that which he cherishes. He loves the wealth more than God. And then he goes on and says, in 24, this is really a kicker, again, and he's really laying it to him, again I say to you, since you can't understand that, it is easier 
for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. Now let me ask you, can a camel get through the eye of a needle? Somebody didn't answer my question. Can a camel get through the eye of a needle? So you know he can't get in. He says, it is easier for a camel to get through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Now, he made it very clear. And today, in the teachers coming from the church, majority of mega churches teaches to get rich. And they get rich. And we think because they're mega churches and they're teaching the prosperity message, which I don't know where they got it from the Bible. Because if God doesn't prosper you, you're not prosperous. You know, there's two different feel goods. There's a spiritual feel good, and there's a flesh feel good. You can make up in your mind through positive thinking that you're doing all right, and you're doing good, and you're successful. But then again, unless God tells you you're doing all right, and you feel good, and you're successful, you really are not. Because we've crossed over to flesh versus spirit. And so we all buy off on certain names who are known, TV and radio and writing books and all, on gaining wealth through the word. There's a system you got to use. And, you know, I'm guilty. I'm the first one that says that I'm guilty. I bought off on that earlier. But as the Holy Ghost reveals the word to me, that was nothing but junk and lies and a scheme to sell books. A scheme to keep us and send us in the wrong direction and we'll miss the kingdom of God because we're practicing God, something God told us not to practice. Now, I'm not saying making that in a vacuum. Go back over to Matthews. I'm just telling you the Bible. Well, you're reading the Bible, right? And everything God said is not to be questioned, right? Everybody in agreement? No man can question God. Hallelujah. And the reason why I said that, you need those two scriptures to make sure that we would understand and, be, and go through Matthews correctly. And so we're going back, and we're going back over here to read the word, Matthew 6, 21. For where the, where, now, now look what he says. For where your treasure is, say that with me, where my treasure is, there my heart will be also. You know what God said? Now, what did God demand that we give him? His what? Your heart, your soul, your body, and your mind. Yes. Is that not the law? Does God demand not my heart? Yes, he does. Does he demand my soul? Yes. Does he demand my body? Yes. Does he demand my mind? Yes. Jesus said, if you give them that and love the God, God with your heart, soul, body, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself, you fulfill the law. Isn't that what he said? And then Jesus says, I didn't come to destroy the law. I came to fulfill it. And so if my heart, my soul, my heart is on making money, I can't serve God. Isn't that scriptural? Read it yourself. He says where, my, where a man's heart is, if, if my, my, my mind is on the money, my heart's there. Where my treasure is, there's my heart. Yes. 
And I'm, and again, it's nothing wrong with taking the blessings God gives you every day to live on it. That's the only way we get food. Remember, God started making your, your steak you're going to eat a long time ago for that cow. Your name was on it. God started making your veggies a long time ago in, in the field. God started making your, every, your, your clothes a long time ago when the silkworm started on it. When the cotton was planted, God knew he was going to clothe you. And he knew exactly what you, we're going to read that. He knew exactly what you're going to need this day. My mind wasn't on cut, picking no cotton since I was a child. I used to hate the stuff. And I tell you right now, I, I thank God that he's going to help me get over the hate for it. Because Lucy and I ride past cotton fields, if you, and I look out and you see everything white. And that stuff just make, makes me remember when I was a child and I was out there all day long in the hot sun with my back bent over and I was aching and on my knees and getting one drink of water and from sun up to sundown. My, my criticals, what you call them, curl around your fingers where they stick in your, in your fingernails. Now my hands were sore. And if I didn't pick my share, I would face a switch at the end of the day. But I was picking cotton for somebody so we could live. God knew when he started to make that for you. He made it for you. And then he goes on, he says, now, then we talked about this last week. The eye is the lamp of the body. So then if your eye is clear, your whole body will be full of light. Don't let anybody put the darkness in your light, to put the desire to have things and wealth. Don't let, allow that to come up as a thought. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness, and then, and then the light that is in you is darkness. How great is the darkness? And the darkness he's talking about is about some weeping and gnashing of teeth out of darkness. We don't want to go there. And he says, here we go. Define, here's God making a, a definite statement here. No one can serve two masters. Anybody in here can? No. You can't serve two masters. You can, he, and God says, either you will hate one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other, and you cannot serve. Now, now notice what God said very clearly. You cannot serve God and what? Wealth. Mammoth. Who teaches wealth? Who teaches owning airplanes? Who teaches owning multitude of land? Who teaches building the biggest church in town? Who teaches all this stuff? Remember how the Jews did? When they talked about how beautiful the temple is, they told Jesus about how beautiful the temple is. Listen to me, saints. Don't miss this. They told Jesus. And Jesus said, I'm telling you, this place will get torn down. Every brick, every block. And they crucified him. Because he talked against that building. And they'll crucify you if you talk against gain and wealth. The po political process in America will destroy you if you come out against the wealthy. Did you listen to any of the political debates? And I, we don't get in politics that much. Did you know all the wealth 
brought into a miracle in the last eight years. In the last eight years, went to the top one, not even one percent, one half percent to one percent of Americans. Every dollar that went into wealth went into the top one half to one percent of Americans or companies that own. The rest of it, 20 percent, 360 million Americans lived on it. That's the reason why you, you go and you can't holler about nothing. And all that was planned by wealthy people who cannot be satisfied. Greed. You think they know God? You think they think they're mortal? You think their kids think they're mortal? I mean, how many billionaires now? There are billionaires coming out of the woodwork. Out of the woodwork. And their soul is owned by the devil. And in fact, there are many ministers who are billionaires. Billionaires, souls. And they got these huge ministries. Billionaires. And they read the Bible and throw it aside. It doesn't apply to me because God gave it to me. Do you realize how many, what a billionaire is? One person who has $100 million. How many people could you help? How many churches could you build with $100 million? And they're on TV every day asking for more money. They're selling more books and more videos and more tapes and ask for more money. And there are people who love Jesus and they are happy just to get by from day to day. Those are the ones who on God's heart is dealing with. James tell you, the book of James tell you your wealth will testify you in the end. See, they, they haven't even read that. Your wealth will testify against you before God at the end. It didn't say your living expenses. It didn't say your income. He says your wealth. Now, I'm going to move a little bit further. Three, I only got about three or four minutes. He says, for this reason, now, now, now watch what Jesus says. For this reason, somebody say that with me. For this reason, I say to you, do not worry about your life. As to what you will eat, as to what you will drink, for your, and not for your body, as to what you will put on, is not life more than food, and the body more than what? Clothing. Now, he went through all this to teach you and I something that we never get and never got. Because he's telling us, and when he says life, when you stop breathing, what happened to life? Who blew the breath into man and he became a breathing soul? And what life do we look forward to? Not this life, but we look to what? Eternal life. Now here Jesus is saying, why are you wasting your time trying to worry about something, trying to get something that's rotten? Oh, Lord. Need to be thinking about what? I'm, I'm getting ready to leave. 
Pastor Lucy is going to come out. You need to have your brain and your heart and your soul on spiritual things because that is the only life that there is. You were born dead. And the only way you walk and get life is that Jesus Christ come inside of you and get you born again. Do we understand that? There are very few of you around.